Welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to talk about my experience with developing in the STM32 ecosystem of 32-bit processors available from STMicroelectronics. We'll be using STMCube, a pin mapping and hardware abstraction software, and an Eclipse-based IDE. Spoiler alert, I think it sucks for hobbyists. This journey all starts with a vision of what our microcontroller needs to do in order to control our inverter, and how microcontrollers should just be. In my opinion, microcontrollers are a tool. They are a tool made of very complex parts that create a few conceptually simple blocks. Timers, PWM generators, interrupts, logic that moves data between these blocks and the main processor. In theory, there is no reason why a person would need to understand the details of the register configuration running behind the hood in any specific microcontroller to get these basic functions working. This is where hardware abstraction comes in. A hardware abstraction layer of code is meant to hide that lower level configuration from someone, say, a hobbyist, that doesn't need to dive into the advanced features of a peripheral and just needs to get something working right now. The Arduino IDE is a great implementation of hardware abstraction, where a user can have no idea how the processor works and still get something done, something awesome that they want to get done. However, the Arduino hardware abstraction layer is very limiting for advanced users. Like if you want a specific PWM output frequency, it can screw up a lot of codependent functions in the microcontroller or if you want to simultaneously read or write data to two different communication interfaces at the same time or two different chips on the same bus, it's not going to happen, at least not easily. For most professional design work, a unit cost target drives component selection, even for a microcontroller. In this case, it's perfectly acceptable to spend 200 hours digging through data sheets to get a microcontroller configured correctly for an application because the money that goes into fund those 200 hours of work is made up tenfold in manufacturing. For me, that 200 hours of work translates into months of getting effectively nothing done on our project. I just don't have enough time for that. And I don't have enough time to mess around with hardware abstraction that doesn't work, or microcontrollers with data sheets that are missing information. That doesn't fit into my vision of what a microcontroller should be, because that doesn't make my microcontroller a tool. The HAL driver handles the nuance surrounding getting all the registers set up just so. In theory, once a person figures out the hardware abstraction function calls, they can compile new hardware abstracted drivers if their microcontroller hardware changes radically, then just use those same HAL function calls in the higher level code the next time around. Again, the Arduino series is a great example of this, with their analog write function that turns on PWM peripherals across different, wildly different types of microcontroller hardware, scaling that same function anywhere from an 8-bit micro with 8 pins up to a 300-pin ARM core processor. This HAL pre-compilation system is called STM32 Cube MX for ST Micro's line of STM32 processors. This software compiles a starting project that's used in a development environment then is based on the physical hardware in the processor. It, this handles setting pin modes correctly, clock configuration, etc. Getting all of your peripherals in the core, the clocks, set up to get your code running on the microcontroller. If it works well, this could save a lot of time when digging through the datasheet for the device. Then again, I've wasted so much time trying to decipher the how functions that it might have just been faster to go through the datasheet and set the registers manually anyways. To its credit, I've gotten buried in registers for configuring clocks for processors more times than once, and the STM32 Cube software really does a great job of the clock configuration. However, I've yet to find a comprehensive reference manual from ST for literally any other aspect of the HAL ecosystem and they supposedly had some part in creating these libraries, so they should, in theory, understand how the HAL functions relate to their hardware settings in STMQ MX. It just feels like they haven't gotten around to documenting the code yet. And that's a real shame, 
considering there have been development kits in this ecosystem available since before 2014. Come on guys, make a manual. The abstraction that could allow a person to never crack open the datasheet is what really drew me to the ST Micro promise with the STM32 series and the STM32 Cube software plus their free development environment, but it just wasn't there. After weeks of working through their ecosystem, I found that the examples online were sometimes incorrect, with confirmed working answers no longer working, probably as a result of ST Micro changing HAL functions without rebranding their new implementation or maintaining legacy compatibility. It's just a hot mess. That said, the way that functions linked to HAL, DMA, linked to pins, I thought I understood how it worked. But it seems like every time I try to add a new peripheral to the mix, the software gets thrown into exceptions or loops and it just spins its wheels forever. And it, it just it required a lot of tinkering and debugging to get extremely basic functions running on the micro. Again, not an issue in a professional setting where there's cost targets to hit, but frustrating as heck for hobbyists. Even worse. Once I fought through the libraries, which were found to be poorly documented in finding the register information that I needed in app notes rather than the 700 page data sheet. I mean, what could you possibly talk about in 700 pages where you can't even fit in a register map somewhere in that data sheet? Needless to say, I was frustrated. The thing that did me over and really ticked me off is when I tried to port my code from a lower tier micro to one with a higher core clock and more advanced features. Went to STM30 cube, exported a project for the new micro, and it didn't work. At this point, I was done. I'd rather start over with an ecosystem that was well-documented and used help functions that actually prevented me from needing to dig through data sheets. I mean, all we need is to set up simple things like ADC conversions and PWM outputs. It should not be this hard. That's what led me to the Cypress PSOC series of microcontrollers. Very similar story graphical pen and peripheral configuration leading to writing C or C++ code based off of hardware abstraction libraries. The only difference is that this time it worked. There are a ton of example projects baked into the Cypress tool that provided code and HAL configuration examples filtered by microcontroller compatibility. These example projects made it easy to figure out how each peripheral accomplished its function without needing to dive into those lower level registers or worrying about the complicated generic names for HAL functions on the STM32 side of things. All of the Cypress functions are customized with whatever name you provide, followed by a standard suffix for each function, for each type of peripheral. This makes it really easy to set up multiple DMA channels, a breeze to set up ADC conversions, and incredibly easy to set up PWM outputs, linking to physical hardware pins. This was like a breath of fresh air for me. I got done in 30 minutes what took me weeks of troubleshooting with the STM32 platform. Icing on the cake time, the development environment for the Cypress tool has embedded links to app notes and data sheets for the different peripheral blocks and their graphical tools. So if you're running into any issues, they send you links to the documentation to fix the problem. Shorter video this time, I hope that's all right. All of this to say that I started with high hopes for the STM32 workflow with this dev kit, ran into some issues, tried to migrate to another dev kit to mitigate some of those issues, and saw that the code was not directly compatible the way that I was led to believe. Got so fed up with the ecosystem that I gave this dev kit up, went over to Cyprus, gave that one a try, and was not disappointed. That said, it took me some time to figure out how the pin mapping worked in the Cypress graphical tool since all the options aren't on a single tab and it was a little weird, but the point is once I figured out the tool, it made intuitive sense to get everything else configured because I figured out the tool. You first create the pin on the project architecture drawing, give it a name. The names given on that page are used through the next steps of the process. Same goes for peripheral blocks. Calling a timer block PWM1 will make all the HAL functions contain PWM1 underscore the function that you actually want to call. In this case, take the pin name you defined. Now head over to the pin mapping tab, and that's where you can find the pin name unassigned in the table on the right side of the screen. Assign that logical pin to a physical one, and you're done. You're now free to use the health functions to turn that pin on and off, drive your PWM peripheral, whatever you needed to do. Maybe I'm being too hard on the STM32 HAL libraries. 
but every time I tried to interface with the new peripheral, I felt like I wasted four hours getting nothing done by blindly trying different CubeMX settings and health function calls that I found online. And that just wasn't working for me. May have taken some time, but we picked a microcontroller vendor to move forward with, Cypress, with their PSOC 4 series. Still have an M0 ARM core, should work just fine. Subscribe to be notified of our future videos where we'll discuss purchasing electronic components, introduce some data filtering principles, and build our proof of concept board. I think that microcontrollers that work are great. And if this video helped you to select a microcontroller for your project, let me know by hitting the like button on this video or leaving a comment letting us know what you were working on. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching AE for everyone, and thanks for staying till the end. Bye!